Okay, well, how about part B? Um, okay, so now find the magnitude and direction of the force um, F on, a, on an electron. Can right. I just say? Um, <coughs> so, um, at a distance, um, R equals 2R. So at a point outside. Yeah. Good, so it's good that you're putting that into your picture. Good, because as usual, we're just going to use the formula to figure out the magnitude. Yeah. And then we know that when Q is less than zero, um, the electric field and the force are in opposite direction. That's good, that's good. So if the electric field was pointing out towards infinity, then the force is going to point in towards the axis. Good. So again, we're going to have to stick with our assumption that we have a positive charge density. They didn't really set that out, but we've been assuming a positive charge density and we saw that that would mean that the electric field over here would be pointing up, but we have a electron, which is a negative test charge. And it's good that you remember that for a negative test charge, the direction of the force is opposite to the direction of the field. A lot of people would get that wrong, so it's good that you thought about that. So that would give us uh, the force, and they told us it was an electron. Good. All right, so let's see what our answer is. Good. I think they, uh, he might have uh, made a mistake here. He said that you should give your answer in terms of epsilon zero pi e and little r. Um, he might have meant, though, that you should give your answer in terms of epsilon zero pi e and big R, or at least they might have asked you that. So then we'd have to get rid of the little r here. Well, if we were going to get rid of the little r, what should we plug in for little r? big R because they told us that the position was 2 times big R. So then the answer would be 4 pi big R. All right, well, really, they could ask it either way. So you just have to pay attention to what they're asking for. In terms of little r, this would be a good answer for the magnitude. But in terms of big R, uh, this would be a good answer for the magnitude. And we got that the direction, assuming a positive charge density. So wh what's going to be our answer for the direction? Yeah, that's good. We shouldn't just say down, because if we were down here, the force would be up. So it's good that you're saying that it's going to be in towards the cylinder, in towards the central axis. That's a really good way to answer it. We don't need to worry about whether that's the positive or the negative direction. We can just answer in terms of, uh, okay. in terms of words. Good.
here is going to actually be pretty difficult. That's something that we haven't worked on together in a case that this, this is di this difficult. So maybe we should go over this part together? Yeah. Okay. So what we're doing here is the uh, electron is going to be moving from this initial point to this final point. And what you're remembering is that when the question asks us for speed, a good way to answer that is using conservation of energy. Um, so what we really want to know is how is the potential energy here going to be changing? And you remember that if you know the change in the potential and you multiply that by the test charge, that'll give you the change in the potential energy. And I think it's good that you're seeing that we're treating the electron as a test charge here. And the cylinder is the source charge. That's why you use this test charge formula. So the hard part here is going to be figuring out delta V. We have to figure out delta V, and this is going to be a little bit harder than any of the delta V problems that we did before. Um, we don't have any straightforward formulas for this. I gave you a formula for V when we worked together before, but this was only for point charges. This doesn't work for line symmetry, so we can't use this. Instead, we're going to have to use a formula that we haven't talked about. This is a formula you and I haven't talked about, but you might have seen it uh, in the homework or in lecture. Uh, okay, so this is the general formula for figuring out voltage changes between point A and point B. So again, uh, we can't get away from doing a little calculus here. So we can try to go through this together. Uh, let's see. So the first thing I'm going to do is maybe uh, ignore the negative sign and just focus, uh, put in the dot to show we're focusing on the magnitude, because the signs really tend to get us confused. And we're going to think about going on a path from the initial to the final point. And we might as well make things simple and go on a linear path from the initial to the final point. Now the hard part here is the electric field is not going to be uniform along this path. This is why this is harder than any of the problems we've done before. We've just seen that the electric field is constantly changing. So we cannot take E out of this integral. We're going to have to do some calculus here. Um, so let's see, where are we going? Um, well, we're going from a position where um, we're at a distance of capital R to where we're at a distance of 2R. Right, because over here, we're at a distance of 2R from the center line. And here, we're going to be at a distance of just R. Um, Maybe it would make more sense to say we're going from 2R to R, but that would just change the sign, and we're not going to try to figure out the sign from this. All right, so what should I plug in for the electric field? Um, should I use this top formula or this bottom formula for electric field? Because our path is outside of the cylinder. We're only moving around outside the cylinder, so we have to use this formula for when we're outside of the cylinder. So we'll plug in lambda over 2 pi little r epsilon 0. Um, and what I'm doing here is I'm using, uh, well, here we can use s for distance. But uh, maybe in this case, I'll use r for distance to be consistent with this variable. Is that what I want to do? Yeah. So we'll use r to indicate our distance from the center line. OK. So we plugged in this formula here for capital E. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, this is a dot product, which means we only want the component of the electric field that's parallel to our motion. But in this case, the entire electric field is going to be parallel to our motions. We don't need to worry about breaking things into components. Okay, and then 
questions we can follow on Lambda over 2 pi e naught now? Okay. 